I don't, unfortunately, Tommy. No, I, I got rid of the landline. It was costing me too much money. How's One of the big problems we have. How's yourself Sorry, anyway? Sorry, say again? How's yourself anyway? Yeah, not so bad, not so bad. Suffering from a wee bit of insomnia, but sure, nothing I can't handle. Ah, how's life in, in Dublin anyway? Um, It's the same old, same old, Tommy. We keep getting told that, that our economy is on the way back and the country's doing marvellous, but the truth of the matter is there's a great deal of people out there suffering, so... But that's always been the case, you know? You see, the way out of it is that there's a short, sharp shock that if the whole of Europe was to see what happened in Iceland, that they'd done a few measures, apart, I mean, apart from actually jailing a few of the bastard bankers who fucked everything up, one of the things yeah. they were able to do was devalue their economy. And uh, it, it is painful, but it's only painful for the initial period. Once you've done the first three, six months, a year, uh, what happens is you get the benefits very quickly of a bounce of, well, the devaluation uh, and the allowing, well, basically to find your feet as an economy, which Ireland, Portugal, Italy, Spain, all these countries will never be able to find their feet because the whole thing was a fucking con. I mean, apart from the... Exactly. Whole, it was a fix and a, a fudge by the Americans allowing them to come in, but the bloody... It was there as a, a con so that the, the Bundesbank became the Bank of Europe and it became... All these mm. European people became a... a, a subsidiary of Germany, but now we find that Germany, you know, you're tied into Germany interest rates, you're tied into Germany's uh, uh, financial structure, yet yeah, that's fucking hammering yeah. you. So until you pull out yeah. of that, you're going to be in a long suffrage for fucking decades, probably. It's a fucking joke, mate. It is. It's an absolute, it's an absolute disgrace. And, and, you know, I don't want to come across as one of those things well had uh, wearing conspiracy theorists, but, you know, we have... I, well, I wouldn't call them a generation, but we have a select few who all went to the same public schools in Dublin, and some of them are bankers, some of them are politicians, some of them are builders, some of them are journalists. We all get keep getting the same narrative repeated over and over and over again. And, I, I mean, there's probably a few out there who, I don't know whether I'll pick this up on a podcast or later on, but we had a very, a very sickening decision that, that happened in the last little while. They had this... Um, He's a drag queen. He's a guy called Panky Bliss. He went on one of the main TV shows on a Saturday night. And the host of the TV show said to him, um, go on, name a few homophobes out there. And the guy named a prominent journalist on an organization called the Iona Institute. And the journalist from the Iona Institute threatened to sue the national broadcaster. And they just keeled over, bent over, and you know, let the lawyers do what lawyers do best, and they paid out 85,000 euro in compensation to these people. And, you know, all it was over the fact that uh, this individual who uh, is uh, an openly gay man said that he wanted uh, something that Scottish people have got, which is marriage equality for homosexuals. And uh, it's just, you know, our country is an absolute disgrace at the moment. And I wonder whether or not we will ever see a fair and equitable society. But I, I don't know. It worries me. It really does. No, the, the whole the whole thing's fucked. I mean, how do they allow Ireland to to go into that? I mean, Tony Blair and, and is it Gordon Brown who used to say Britain would never join unless the economic conditions were right. And what what happened? Goldman Sachs came in and fudged the books for all these countries mm -hmm. to enable them to join. And it was cool because they could get away with it while there was a tsunami of money. So while there was free money kicking about for the banks, but as soon as that fucking tap ran dry, then the economies who weren't they geared up to it, i.e. they hadn't had enough money coming in to cover all the money that was going out. I mean, it's just simple fucking basic economics that you're borrowing more than what your, your, your actual economy can do. And the country mm -hmm. like Germany, which is able to borrow and borrow because they're fucking producing everything. You look at... I was just watching a program in a new fucking somewhere in South Africa, driving about in a Mercedes Benz. So there you go, mate. The, the, the financial, sorry, the, the the manufacturing heartbeat of the whole of Europe is Germany. So when you when you use the one currency, it was it was always to benefit them. They've always been the, and it's ended up crushing Ireland, mate. And do you ever think mm -hmm. that the Irish uh, government would even pull out of Europe? No, we can't, because if we did, we'd be financially fucked, basically. And we have... But you're financially you fucked, know, <laughs> Well, yeah, but we'd be even more so. We've got the European headquarters of Facebook here in Dublin. Google have a massive presence here. 
and even before the sort of you know those those internet based organizations you know Intel had a huge manufacturing plant down in um Kildare and you know even before that we had a place called Organish alumni down in Limerick and you know they all benefited from um this corporate tax rate we have which means you know that I think uh Facebook have more people working in London than, than they do have in Dublin but they declare all their taxes to Ireland and don't have to pay as much tax. I mean, it's the kind of thing that Jimmy Carr was hauled over the coals over by David Cameron and his mates. But uh, anyway, that's that's that particular issue. Um, but you like to be honest, I heard you sort of mention my name when you were on um, when you just when I just tuned in live there, and uh, I was going to put the computer away, and then you said something which kind of um, piqued my interest about the fact that if we want to talk football here, because I wouldn't say economics isn't exactly my uh, area of expertise, but um, a lot of people would argue that neither is analysis of Celtic, but the you know, the fact that we passed up an opportunity to win a treble and win a treble at Celtic Park, oh, I, I mean, it just, I mean, talk about economic situations driving me up the wall, that just irritates the, you know, what I mean, it, it's just... Really it, I mean, when you think of it that way, you know, to win, oh, it's never been done it have just been blessed the whole three of them at the one time in the one oh. I know, I know. It's it it's a fairly damning indictment of, of what of, of how the club is going at the moment and um I don't know, I mean there's a few little bits getting out into the press and I, I treat what comes out in the press with a healthy degree of scepticism at the best of times, but you know, is is, is Lennon off this summer? Is he have you decided he's had enough of the the goldfish bowl that is Glasgow and he decides maybe if there's a position available in Leicester or Norwich or something. I wouldn't like to see him go. I don't know. I mean, I know one or two people up in Lurgan and one of them had me convinced that uh, he was going to go after um, all of that bullshit over, you know, bombs and bullets in the post. Um, He had me convinced that he was going to go and and, and I thought it would have been an absolute disgrace if he was chased out of Scottish football, but... It's it's the age old question of saying it's all well and fine the finger blame at Lennon over not getting a, a striker in that everyone is in agreement with or everyone can be happy with in the last transfer window. But um, I'm not entirely sure it's all Lennon's fault. But I don't think there's a lack of ambition on, on Lennon's part. I just wonder, you know, wonder whether or not the club and, and the sharp suited man, as we all like to call him, whether they back him enough. I mean, you seem to be seems to have your finger on the pulse more than a lot of people out there. Are you hearing things in the grapevine that you can uh, you, you can let us uh, us lesser mortals know about? Oh no, I don't be blowing smoke up my tailpipe like that, you mad bastard! I don't know nothing. I know nothing, you mad bastard. But, uh, well, you know a lot more. You know a lot more than most of us, or you certainly you have, you have a lot more numbers in your phone book than most of us do. So that, that, that's because it's all Celtic fans have passed it on to me, mate. It's nothing that I've done spectacular. Oh, okay. I've just, uh, if you don't ask, you don't get, you don't get, don't greet. So, you know, there's, there's okay. numbers I've, I've been asking for for ages I've no managed to get, like Peter Lawwell's and, and other bands, but you, you get there in the end. But, no, well, the, the thing, just that I've got a hunch, you know, I just try to, you know, try to second guess. And, or if you look at it, uh, Celtic would, uh, I think, would maybe benefit with a freshness every four or five years because of the pressure and intensity. And I think Neil Lennon mm-hmm. is, is, he's faced more than any other Celtic manager has in recent times and he stood up to it. So if he'd left a few years ago... He's uh, faced more than any manager in British football history, it's faced. Yeah, yeah. And that's you, the reality if, of it. Yeah, if you, if you look yeah. at it that way. And for what? So, uh, you know, he, he's... I, I, I mean to say I wouldn't say he's a, I mean it's hard it's, it'd be hard to say he's a failure, but certainly the this year I think has I think it's I think it's apparent that the who wears the trousers in the relationship between Lawwell and Lennon is definitely Lawwell because if Lennon yeah. was allowed to to go and buy the players he was wanting possibly we would have had a better team that could have done better in Europe Europe and would have. Uh, one is a treble, but maybe it was a case mm. of Celtic were economising, keeping their money. You know, the twenty million they made in the transfer money plus the two Champions League. Maybe they, they will. Maybe there's either a black hole that some of the zombies were hinting at, or 
they're just holding <laughs> on to it. Either holding on to it because it's a case of you know why spend when we don't have to the now, and especially with mm-hmm. the you know the economic climate, and especially with the 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 you know the the, the zombies not being here the, the the way the way it's been with the support. But I think the key one is if Lenin is thinking about doing it off. Do you know that it's best to do it now because it would allow a new manager one year to bed in because if Lennon is thinking about himself and his career and if he's thinking, well, I want to go next year, he might as well do it this mm-hmm. year just based on the fact that if he really wanted to help Celtic, then the better way to do it was to let another manager get a year start and fucking yep. and, and, and McCoyst or, or whoever was going to be for them. You know, if you just look at it that way, I don't know, what do you think of that? I mean, that, that might be in the back of the mind of even out his thinking. You know, somebody might say to him, you know, if you're thinking of going, you have to tell us now, if you want to go next year, then we don't want mm-hmm. that. We, you either stay here for the next two to three years. If you don't want to commit that, then go now. Yeah. What do you think about that, bro? There's uh, a, couple of, a couple of thoughts in relation to that. I mean, if you're going to bring in a new manager, you're going to have to back that new manager with transfer funds. And I don't think Lennon has had the kind of funds that he really he really has earned the right to spend. And, you know, I, I, look, Mo Bangura was not a Lennon signing. I don't believe for one moment he was a Lennon signing. And again, I don't have any insight into the matter, but I don't think Lee Griffiths was a Lennon signing. And, you know, I think he, Lennon has earned the right to build a team again like he built it when he brought in the likes of, well, himself and John Parks brought in the likes of Izaguirre and Hooper and Ledley and even Calvin Wilson. So, you know, if if you're saying there's money there to spend, why not give it to a manager who, okay, he's not done, he hasn't quite hit the heights he hit previously, but he's at least, in my view, earned the right to, to try and build that team again. And if he wants to build a team again, that's that's the big question. But I think if if he decided he's had enough, then you know, he'll go with with my eternal thanks for everything he did as a player and everything he's done as a manager. And you know, nights like Barcelona at home, and you know, you know, be, beating the Seth Conians three 0 and, and and all of that. So, but um, it's on, just on, on that hand. I see what you're saying there, right? What what we yeah. then is the. Well, the, the the turning up at the shit dome when we could have won the league there, you know that was a, that was a that was a choker to say the least. You know that the best mm. bit about that was was walking over the hill, singing walking over the hill, and then I actually bumped in there and and uh, you know. But then the the party was just so deflated because as soon as they scored the goal, a man sent off, and that was it. It was the same old, same old Celtic. So then you add yeah. that in with the, the other deflations. I mean, this season in Europe, it's been, I thought it was abysmal. And you kind of put the whole blame to Lennon, but yeah. it was on his well, watch, it, mate. It was on his watch. If he wasn't happy with the transfers, well, was, then he should have stood was. his ground and said, I want, if you don't give us all these players, just give me one fucking major hitter. Give me one guy mm-hmm. that I really want, and this is a guy I want. Fucking give me him, and I'll take all the rest of your shit. Yeah. I don't know. I agree. I mean, I don't. I don't think Lennon is above criticism. I think he's he, he's got a few things wrong in the last little while. His cup record, you know, even as far back as that Ross County semi-final disgrace, is not what it should be and not what it could be. But you know, especially when there's no Rangers there, isn't there? Yeah. Well, uh, to be honest, I don't think that we really should judge him. Uh, you know, he can only beat the opposition that that that's set out in front of him, and if. If Sevco aren't there, then that's you know it's not Neil Lennon or or Lowell or Celtic's doing. And um, no, but no, know, I understand that. I understand that. But in in the sense that uh, our major opponent is is out the window, then you would have mm-hmm. thought that the two out of nine in cup competitions uh, should have at least been better. And then the, what that also shows is, well, uh, there are certain times when he's not able to adapt or change. Uh, to, to a condition where a, a team can out in a different way and, and, and mm. uh, at times maybe he's lackadaisical or maybe not focused enough, I don't know Do, do you, I, I've, I've seemed to think in certain times when we're losing, he's just he's. I don't think he set the team up right he's no, he's fo- he's no focused enough and he makes oh, he bad clearly decisions hasn't. He clearly hasn't, I mean the team was so off the ball against Aberdeen at home, you know that that can only be down to the to the, the way they were set up and the, the way they were prepared in in the run up to the game and that you know ultimately whether it's the coaching staff or not but that rests you know firmly at Neil Lennon's door so 
And um, you know, he usually, he comes out with his his usual.